That theory was disproved a long time ago. Your equation is wrong. You teachers disappoint me all the time. Stuart, that's no way to talk to your teacher. You've been warned about this before. So I'm just supposed to sit here and listen to you go on and on about nonsense? I got out of my seat, grabbed a whiteboard marker, and retaught the mathematical concept that Mr. Brian had been trying to teach the class. When I was done explaining, everyone looked like they understood. See? Easy as pie. And you said you had a PhD. In what? Bluffing? <laughs> Get out of my class! I've had enough of your disorderly behavior! I'll be calling your parents in tomorrow! I shrugged. I guess he wasn't happy that I'd helped him out. No one ever was. But this is a story about how I eventually got my revenge, and you need to stick around until the end to find out how. Boy, did I make everyone suffer. My parents came to my school the next day. We all met in the principal's office with that annoying Mr. Brian. Your son has no respect for authority. What did you do this time, Stuart? I simply explained a concept that he was teaching incorrectly. This young man disrupted my class. I was teaching quite correctly, thank you. I mean, you need to have better interviews when you're hiring teachers. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. Have you even seen his qualifications? How do you know they're not fake? My parents are spending a lot of money to send me here, you know. We expect a quality education. I shouldn't have to teach your classes. Are you going to start paying me a salary? Because I think you should. You see, Mr. and Mrs. Jonas, this is the attitude we have to put up with every day. Stuart has no respect for authority and is extremely arrogant. We acknowledge that he's very intelligent, but this attitude won't take him very far. Like, did he just ignore everything I just said? Anyway, this meeting ended with my mom defending me and my principal threatening to kick me out for any other offenses. When we got home, they did let me have it though. We defend you in public, but the truth is, you're really giving us a headache, son. What? How? We really are paying a lot to send you to that elite school. I know you don't always agree with them, but could you please try and be a bit calmer? But mom, they're so annoying. Just try. So I thought I'd make an effort just for my parents, especially my mom. My previous school was worse. It was an ordinary public school and I didn't find it challenging at all. It felt like preschool work and in my freshman year, I'd already mastered all the senior level content. My parents decided to transfer me to an elite school for high school students who were ready for college level content. All the teachers had doctorates and were supposed to be the best in the country. The school was really modern and looked like something out of the future. My dad had also taken an extra job to help cover the tuition. Now, although I'm pretty clever, I wasn't your typical nerd. I'm tall, muscular, and drop-dead gorgeous. I don't wear glasses either. No offense to my four-eyed viewers. As soon as I transferred to that school, I felt like a celebrity. All the girls were drooling over me, and I pretty much had my pick of whoever I wanted. But unlike your typical handsome dudes, I didn't care too much about looks. I was attracted to the intelligence and I immediately fell for the smartest girl in my class, Millie. She was a cute, short girl with black hair, brown eyes, and the most humongous glasses I'd ever seen in my life. When I asked her out the first time, it was hilarious. You wanna go out with me? Yes, Millie. But you can get any other girl you want. Why me? You're the most beautiful in my eyes and you're so, so smart and you have a wonderful personality. Is this some kind of joke? Well, go out with me once and you'll find out. I winked at her and she blushed. She agreed and when I took her out, I made sure that our first date was memorable. I gave her a dozen roses, lots of chocolate, then we went to a museum. Smart chicks dig that stuff. So she was convinced it wasn't a joke and a month later, she agreed to be my girlfriend. All this to say, my high school life was going great. I was gorgeous, I had a girlfriend and I was smart. I just hated the teachers because I thought they were so dumb. I decided to take my mom's advice and be a little calmer, but that didn't last very long. My biology teacher, Miss Thompson, was teaching something about the latest research in biochemistry research, but her sources were outdated. That's wrong, Mrs. Thompson. What do you mean that's wrong? Your sources are outdated. I was just reading up on this last night. Here's why your research is flawed. I got out of my seat and taught the class again. She stood in a corner and her pale face quickly changed to red. You see, please do the proper research before coming to class. There's no excuse for this sloppy type of teaching. Our parents are paying you to be lazy. 
He's right. Wow, Stuart, you're so smart. The two of you get out of my class right now. You think you're the Bonnie and Clyde of the education system, huh? Get out. I am so sick of you students thinking you're better than me. Maybe you should all just stay home and teach yourselves. Ugh. Millie and I went outside while she continued her tantrum. Now, I knew that something like this would happen eventually and that they'd call my parents to tell them I'd finally been expelled. To avoid this whole situation, I had reprogrammed my parents' phones. If the school called, they'd hear a pre-recorded message that my parents knew nothing about. I used previous voice recordings of my mom's voice to make the perfect responses. What? He got in trouble again? So he's expelled now? Okay, thanks for the information. After being summoned to the principal's office alone and being told that this was the last straw and that my parents had already been informed, I told him goodbye and went to look for Millie who was still waiting for me in the hallway. Do you want to spend the day with me or do you want to wait until your next class? Let's go do something fun. We left school and went to a small carnival. We ate loads of sugary snacks and fed each other cotton candy. We went into a haunted house and we even rode a merry-go-round. It was magical until we decided it was time to go home and I had to answer the difficult questions. So what are you gonna do now? My parents have no idea I've been kicked out and I'm not going to tell them. I'll leave home like normal every morning and I'll think about the rest later, don't worry. But all I know for sure is that I'm going to destroy that school. I'm going to make sure they never recover. She gave me a smile which let me know that she had faith in my plan or the lack of it. It's great to have a partner who supports you. I walked her to her house, kissed her goodbye, then I went home. I walked in and my parents were already seated at the dinner table having a random, boring conversation. Hey, son, I was just explaining to your mother that dolphins aren't as friendly as they're portrayed to be. They can be so dangerous. Did you know that? Yeah, they have teeth and they'll bite you. Well, I think they're cute. Did you have a good day? Yeah, perfect. I learned so much today. They didn't suspect a thing. The next day, I left home like normal and took a bus to nowhere. I didn't know where I was going. I just paid for a ticket and left. I just wanted to make sure I wouldn't be found by my parents or recognized by any of our neighbors. When I reached the final stop, I got off the bus and went to a coffee shop. I sat down and thought of a plan. I was going to start an online business to see if I could make some extra money. But I was also going to start a blog which would totally sabotage the school that kicked me out. I started working on marketing my blog on social media. When I was sure I had enough followers, I started posting all kinds of stuff. And by all kinds, I mean the worst possible kinds. And this was how it went every day. I'd spend half the day on my business and the other half on the blog. I started the first rumor that the school paid exam companies for exam scripts, and that's why they had excellent scores. The students were all cheating, and the teachers were helping them to do it. The fake news spread like wildfire, and the principal decided to address it publicly. He tried to persuade the public that it wasn't true, but I don't think that many people believed him. That was just the first week. But I wasn't satisfied with just that, so I made up a story that he was having an affair with Miss Thompson, that awful science teacher I hated. They were both married, so I knew it would be super harmful. Did I care? No. I wanted to destroy them. I used my excellent Photoshop skills to create fake pictures of the two of them, kissing in a dark alley, making out in a classroom, having dinner together. It was scandalous. I released one a day just to be extra dramatic and by the end of the week, the story was all over the news. Both of their spouses were planning to divorce them and they were both confused as hell. It was so satisfying. My followers grew every single day and after a while, media companies would report on what I had posted. Nobody knew I was behind it, and the thrill was awesome. By the end of the first month, the school had lost several students, but that wasn't enough for me. I wanted the place to be shut down, so I targeted random teachers and constructed horrible fake pasts for them that I published to the blog. The English teacher? Well, he used to be in prison for drug possession. The math teacher? He harms cute animals for fun. The social studies teacher? She'd been fired from every other job in the past for stealing. How could people feel safe while their children were surrounded by criminals? I made it as persuasive as possible. None of these stories were true, but I made them so believable. They lost more students, but I didn't realize that my actions could have ridiculous consequences for me. Because when I got home after the end of another successful week, my parents were fuming. 
How come you haven't told us what's going on at your school? I thought you knew. It's everywhere. Cheating for exams? And now the staff? They're having affairs with each other? And a teacher who's been in prison? And another one who was a thief? I don't want you to go to that school anymore. We're going to get you a transfer next week. No! I screamed, and that was when it hit me. My perfect days at the coffee shop were coming to an end. No. I had done this to myself. Oh well. So, just like that, I was off to school again the next week. I was really annoyed because I didn't want to have to deal with stupid teachers again. But this place was a lot more pleasant. It was a private school, but I wouldn't describe it as elite. It was very colorful and everyone there seemed so friendly, like they ate rainbows and sunshine for breakfast. I tried to settle into my classes without annoying any teachers, but the truth is that they weren't half bad. I decided to focus on preparing for college, oh, yeah. and just when I felt like I had my life in order again, I got some more good news from Millie. She called me one night while I was finishing some homework. Stuart, you did it! What? They're shutting down the school. The principal was fired some time ago, blah, and they blah, couldn't blah, find blah, anyone blah, to replace blah, him blah, because blah, no blah. one wanted to. It's too much of a mess. Whoa. And guess what? What? I'm transferring to your school next week. We'll be together again. I can't wait. Wow, that's wonderful news. I couldn't believe my luck. I had successfully destroyed that school, and my girlfriend was going to be in my class at my new school. You're probably wondering if I felt any regret for destroying the teachers' lives, and the truth is that I don't. This is just what happens when you mess with a smart person. I hope they learn their lesson.